it away of the Duchess Orange region to share some welcoming remarks. Jeannie. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, it's great to see everyone, albeit virtually, but we're so glad you're joining us here this morning. And I want to tell you a little bit about our United Way. You know, we really serve as a catalyst to increase the community's capacity to improve the lives of its citizens. And we fight for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in our community. Um, our goals are for all children to be educated and ready to succeed, for all families to be healthy, financially stable and independent, and all the neighborhoods to be vibrant and safe. It's so important. Um, we believe with the power of caring organizations and individuals, we'll make our community much stronger. Um, in our efforts to increase financial stability and independence, we offer these financial literacy, literacy seminars like the one you're attending today. And I always learn something every time I attend one of these. Um, but if you're feeling overwhelmed by debt, you are not alone. I can tell you that. The higher cost of everything from housing to haircuts and is a major culprit, right? Um, although inflation has moderated since it's peaked in 2022, Americans, particularly lower income families, um, you know, they're really relying on credit cards to cope, you know, with the sticker shock. Um, according to NASDAQ, around 80% of Americans are in debt. Um, in May, the average American household debt was $104,000, which is huge. Um, it's a new high for the United, Sta United States. And escaping it can be a challenge. I mean, it really can be. And that's why we are so happy uh, to have Mid-Hudson Federal Credit Union here with us today to talk about debt management and consolidation. Um, I wish I had this years ago. Um, we're sure that you're going to come away with so much information. Um, and, you know, these things don't happen unless uh, companies step up and sponsor. And we really want to thank Mid-Hudson Federal Credit Union, Mid-Hudson Credit Union for their sponsorship. We also want to thank Kim Kaiser and Melissa Colon, who are here with us today. And you're going to hear a little bit about them in a bit. Um, and I also, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my amazing United Way team uh, who put this together, especially dear Giuseppe. Melissa Clark, Rebecca Lull, Re Rebecca uh, Lull, and Samantha Lau. Um, tongue twister there. Um, and I just want to thank you all for coming and, you know, use the chat, um, ask questions. Now's the time. And, you know, if you're thinking of a question, probably someone else is too. So don't be afraid. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you. And at this point, I will hand it back to Deirdre. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much, Jeannie. Thanks for being with us this morning. Um, just a few little housekeeping items. We'll be here together for about an hour. About 45 minutes of that will be the presentation itself, and then we'll have time for some questions. Um, if you uh, will, please hold your questions to the end, or you can put them in the chat, um, and I will read them out um, at the end if you choose to put them in the chat. Um, please keep yourself on mute um, so that we can eliminate background noise. Um, if, if for some reason you forget to put yourself on mute, uh, I will probably put you on mute. <laughs> um, but um, that is just keep that background noise at, at bay. Um, so I know you're going to really learn a lot this morning. Um, and I am going to introduce our speaker. Let me just get her bio up here. There we go. Um, Kim Kaiser, she is a loss mitigation underwriter at Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union with 20 years of experience in financial services, including mortgage originations, mortgage underwriting, foreclosure counseling, and loss mitigation. As a loss mitigation underwriter, Kim analyzes applications and financial documents to provide solutions such as loan modifications and payment deferrals to borrowers who are facing financial hardship. And the goal is to find a win-win situation that helps both the borrower and the Mid-Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union. Kim holds a BA in psychology from SUNY New Paltz and is also a credit union certified financial counselor. And in her spare time, you will find Kim spending time with her dog Chinook and traveling. So welcome Kim, thank you very much. The floor is yours. 
Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here. I'm so great, uh, grateful to be able to partner with you guys to prevent, present this uh, webinar. Um, I know it's a hot topic for everyone right now, so I'm hoping I can give you some insight. I hope you can help find it useful to help you understand and manage your personal relationship with debt. Um, so let's get started. I don't see the slides up, so I just wanted to make sure, there we go. Just wanted to make sure uh, we share just the presentation, not my notes, please. There we go. <laughs> I'm not using my notes because I'm not looking at it, um, but I've done this presentation multiple times, so I should be good to go. Um, <clears throat> again, like I said, it's great to be here and let's get started. Um, so debt is almost always a fact of life. You know, as, as you've heard, you know, people have more debt than they've had in the past. Um, and while being completely debt free is a great goal, it's, it's not always realistic. The goal today is going to help you change your mindset and relationship with debt while providing you with some tools to help you manage your existing debt. We're going to try to cover what's what's showing on this page, preventing debt from overwhelming you, some, some tips on how to pay off debt, how to manage your relationship with debt. And we're going to talk about some de debt pitfalls, things that could get you into trouble without you maybe not realizing. And then this is my area of expertise, what to do if you can't make payments, some consequences of ignoring debt. And then we have some resources, debt tracking tool and counseling resources. The things that we're going to provide are useful that you can take away with you that you might be able to use in the future. So, so next. So first and foremost, how do you prevent debt from overwhelming you? Um, these are the five things that I've, I've found will help you from being overwhelmed. First is stop creating new debt. Um, you know, I have I, I have some some tips on the next slide, but stop creating debt, knowing what you owe, prioritizing your debt, working to pay off to debt, and to create that healthy relationship with debt. Um, debt is a part of life. You will have a hard time going through life without creating at least minimal debt. Without it, you can't purchase uh, large items like a home or a car, and you can't establish a credit score without practicing responsible credit usage. Oftentimes, you can't even rent a car without a credit card. So how are you going to get through life if you don't have a little bit of debt? And it's a wonderful goal to have no debt, but realistically, if you set that goal for yourself and you don't meet it, you might be disappointed. So you know, it's not always easy, but you can use the debt as a tool as opposed to having it use you. And it's very easy to fall into some traps. It's very easy to not understand what's happening or not have the information. That's why we have these webinars to give you some information so you don't fall into traps. The key is to use debt responsibly. And if you've created more debt than you can manage, well, take the time to follow these steps and hopefully it will you know, stop overwhelming you. Next. First, stop creating new debt. If debt is bothering you, if debt is overwhelmed, overwhelming you, um, just stop creating the new debt. I know it's really hard because once you get into a cycle of spending more than you have and you use credit cards, you have to use the credit cards to pay for the things that you can't afford because you're paying the credit cards and then it becomes a house of cards that will eventually fall down when you run out of road. When your credit limits are, are maxed out, what else can you do? And I have seen this happen where folks have just run out of road and they don't have any other options but to stop paying everything and then it all falls apart. So one thing you do need to do is determine why you've accrued the debt that you have. So do you have a budget shortfall? Do you have a spending problem? Have you made some poor choices? Did you have a life change that your, your income has gone down? I can give you an example of myself. Um, I made a decision to <laughs> help my family with a restaurant. And so I went from having a regular job and where I had a paycheck and health insurance and all that good stuff to working for my family for nothing. And then I waited tables for tips and, you know, I don't know, at that time I had expenses that were way more than I could possibly uh, afford. So I used credit cards to um, supplement that income. And you would think, wait, Kim, you know all about finances. Why would you do that? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, but then you have to pay the price. Um, so I spent a long time paying off the debt that I had accrued during that, that period of time, but it happens to everyone, even a financial counselor, even someone who's been doing this for years. But I made a choice to do something where my income went down 
and I had to figure out a way. And I don't recommend that because it was very stressful, but sometimes this happens. You just have to move on and try and fix it. And over time, I got that debt paid off and everything is good. Um, and the thing is, though, is that, and also just not having more money isn't going to fix things too, just because, oh, when I make more money, everything's going to be better. It's going to be better. Not always, because oftentimes when you make more money, you spend more money. So having more money doesn't solve the problem. Um, it actually can make it worse because you say, oh, I make this more money now. I can afford a better car. I can afford a bigger house. But you still have the same proportion of debt to what you earn, so you haven't fixed anything. Um, the most important thing is to how, how you're going to manage your money. So what you want to do is you want to start with what debt and what lines of credit do you really need? You probably will need to have that student loan. You're not going to be able to get rid of that. You're probably going to need a car loan because cars are so expensive right now that you may have to borrow money to purchase it. And if you have a mortgage, you have to have that. Obviously, you have to pay for your housing if you don't rent. Don't open cards or apply for loans that you don't actually need. Just because you get a good offer doesn't mean you have to apply for it. You don't have to get that store card. You don't have to get that, that special deal. Um, and you may find that the more research you do into your current financial situation, you may realize that you don't need to apply for new credit. You might be able to pay for things other ways. Um, we will touch on debt consolidation later, but just be very careful when taking on new debt. If you're looking to consolidate your debt, I will go over this more later. Um, just think about it before you do it. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to consolidate everything. It's going to be perfect. It doesn't work that way. You have to think about what you're doing before you do it. Um, so next, and this is the fun one. I mean, look at this ostrich. Um, know what you owe. Um, a lot of times, it's hard to know what you owe because you've forgotten. I have five credit cards. I, I don't look at them all the time. I pay them on automatic payments. I don't even look at my statements. I get electronic statements. I swipe that card. I don't remember what I did an hour later. <laughs> you know, It's really easy to forget what you borrowed. Um, and then when you look at it, you say, Ooh, oh no, what did I do? Um, first thing is, make a list of everything that you owe, all the credit cards, the car loans, um, if you have any, your student loans, your mortgage, anything that you might have that is a debt. And you may have more than you realize. Um, when I was a foreclosure counselor, um, some of my borrowers would show up to meet with me with a bag of mail. Um, those like nothing was opened. So they had all these bills, all these things, and they had no idea what they owed. And because it's really overwhelming. And I understand I've been there. I'm sure we all have. And if it gets to be too much, you can put your head in the sand like the ostrich here and say, think about it later. Um, those credit cards are scary, but when you open them, you can at least face what's going on. If you're getting late notices, open them. Um, it may be stressful in the short term, but it is definitely better to face it head on. Um, you know, but the ostrich here, like we've talked about, he may not know what he owes and he may be in this bliss, but ultimately he is not in control of his finances. And there will be consequences later to him that would be more if he just faced it now. So next. So budgeting. I know this budgeting is a dirty word. It's it's so stressful. How do I make a budget? I'm not going to go over how to make a budget in detail here, but I do have some resources that you can uh, utilize later on that will help you with your budget. Budget and debt go hand in hand. You can't manage your debt if you don't know how much you have to work with. Um, it's an important tool to help you manage your finances. Um, you'll need to know how much of your income you can afford to put towards paying down or paying off debt completely. And you may have to adjust your budget a little bit to cover more debt or eliminate it completely. Um, regardless of the steps you need to take, you will need a clear picture of all of your finances to manage them properly, and that includes your debt. So you'll need to know your housing expense, your food expense, your utilities, uh, incidentals, things that you might need. You need to know what you've got going on so that you don't get surprised and not have the money for the debt. Um, and like I said, later in the webinar, we will talk about some budgeting resources. It's too involved for me to go into today. but making a budget is, is a good first step once you know what you owe and know what you have and i just saw a question i'm sorry I just distracted me um next so prioritizing your expenses we all need to have a place to live we all need to eat food 
And I know insurance seems high, but you need insurance for your car or else you could lose your driver's license. So you have to prioritize the things in order of, of what's important. Having a vehicle to get to work is important. Paying your taxes. I should actually put that at first because the government always wants to get paid first, right? <laughs> um, and then debt and incidentals. Although debt isn't the first one on the list, it still is important because it can mess with the entire process. If you have way too much debt, it can cause other problems. Um, but when you prioritize your expenses, it doesn't mean you neglect to make payments on all the things that are listed. It just means that you're making paying in full a bigger priority based on the importance of your expense. But you're still making the minimum payments on any debts that you might have. Um, but before you have to deal with that, you have to make sure that your basic needs are covered. Um, you, know, you have to have a place to live. And I know some people even struggle with just that because of the cost of rent and mortgages. Um, you know, I, I, I've unfortunately, I've owned my home for several years and I, I didn't realize how much rents have, have gone up in, in the last several years around here. And it, it's disturbing because wages have certainly not increased. So it does make it more challenging for all of us to live in this world. And, and, I, and I know when I talk about this stuff, everyone's going to have a different situation. Um, I cannot um, do this webinar for every single situation. Your struggles may be more involved or less involved. You may be having a position where you can't make meet your basic needs. So that's not going to have can't be a huge priority because you have to take care of your basic needs. But if you have your basic needs met and you want to work on your debt, then then these are the things that you can do. Um, you know, there are other resources that I do actually have that are listed that might be beneficial as well. And we'll get to those at the end. Um, most people pay their credit cards first so they can use them again. So think about that. You know, I pay my credit cards so I can keep running up debt. But remember that house of cards I talked about earlier? The I borrow more money and then I max out and then I have no more, more money. I actually had somebody recently that I um, spoke to who was putting their health insurance on their credit card. And when they maxed out the credit card, they had to stop paying the credit card because they had to pay for the health insurance, but they don't really have the money for the health insurance. So it's caused this whole, you know, snowball effect in, the, in a bad way where they are now they're stuck and we have to figure out something. So again, it, it can be something as simple as that. Your health insurance is too much or you don't have it and you have to pay for it. So I understand we can talk high level like, oh, I want to pay off my debt, but also it could be, how do I keep myself from, you know, not having health insurance? Um, gathering that accurate picture of your finances, though, and then prioritizing your spending will help you manage your finances in a much clearer and easier way. So next. So how do we pay off debt? So if we have the means to do so, if we are in a position where we can make debt that priority, make that a priority, put that in your goals. Um, you know, make it in your consciousness and say, I'm looking to do this. You know, when you want to do something, you have to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You have to set that goal and make that priority. Make that list of everything you owe. Know what you owe. Always remember that. At a minimum, make your minimum payments on everything. Um, if, you, if you don't make the minimum payments, there are consequences for that, and then it becomes harder to pay off that debt. Um, if you can, pay more on principal. You can also roll up payments. That's called a snowball effect. I'll get into that more, more later. Um, and then if you are able to pay more, pay more towards the highest interest rate and the small balance first. And then we will talk also more detail about debt consolidation. Um, now that you have an idea of how to see what debt you have without being overwhelmed, you know, we'll break out these steps a little bit more in the next, um, next couple of slides. Um, if debt's becoming un uncomfortable, focus on how you can pay it off and make it a priority. Um, and as a reminder, don't make more debt. While you're trying to pay off debt, leave the credit cards at home. Try not to buy a new vehicle. Let it go. Try to say, I'm going to go with what I have. I'm not going to buy new stuff. I'm not going to pay for that. Um, I mean, obviously stuff happens, but try to say, I'm, I'm going to put a kibosh on the debt for right now. Um, we can go to the next step, slide. So make a list. I, this is a common theme, isn't it? We've talked about making a list, knowing what you owe. That's a really important step. I've said it three times now, um, but in more detail of what you wanna know is what's the status of the account? Um, you know, is it current? Is it behind? Is it 
Is the account closed or can you still use it? How much do you owe? What's your interest rate and what's your minimum payment? For things like a car loan, that's not going to change usually. Um, you'll, you'll know what your interest rate is. It's usually fixed and your payment's usually fixed for the life of the loan. But for credit cards, rates can go up. I mean, I've seen credit card rates 30% lately. You know, the days of a 7% interest rate credit card are over. Um, so these interest rates are pretty high. You're going to want to know what you're paying and how much your minimum payment is. And remember, for credit cards, the minimum payment is just that. It's a minimum payment to keep the account going. It's a line of credit. You can pay on it, use it again and again, but you're just paying a little bit to keep it going. You're not really doing much to pay it off. We'll go over that later. Um, so when you make this list, you can make a spreadsheet, you can make a list, you can handwrite it, you can type it, you can make it as fancy as you want, you can use calculators available online. Um, what you see may surprise you, but it will give you a better understanding of what debt you have and where to begin. And it may be overwhelming at first, but it can give you an eye-opening understanding of how easy it is to accrue new debt. Um, like I said before, just swiping the credit card, so easy, one-click purchasing on Amazon. <laughs> I've fallen victim to that myself. <laughs> um, your credit card information saved. You don't even have to get the credit card out. How easy is it to do that? Um, but knowing what you owe and knowing that you want to pay it off will help you prevent yourself from creating that new debt. Um, and make sure you consider all parts of the debt, not just the balance you owe. You're going to have to pay interest on debt. Anytime you borrow money, the bank needs to get paid. And the interest that is paid on, on accounts actually goes to paying salaries, um, keeping the lights on. It's not, especially with us being a credit union, we're not the big bad bank trying to, you know, steal money from people. We're providing a service and we have to get paid for that. That's what the interest goes to. It pays for the financial institution to do what they have to do. Um, next slide. I'm, I touched on this before, but make minimum payments. At the very minimum, you should be making the minimum payment required on your debt. But again, you're not going to get anywhere if you do that, especially on a credit card. Um, I, think, I think it's the next slide. Yeah, the next slide will have something, but don't move yet. Um, you'll you're just treading water. You're not, you're not moving forward. The debt won't get any worse, but it won't get any better either. Um, but make that minimum payment because it will get worse if you don't make the minimum payment. If we go to the next slide, I'll show you, this is something that's on a credit card. And if you open your credit card statements, this is on it. Um, it explains to you what happens if you only make the total minimum payment. Um, I can't remember what the debt amount was on this, but if you only make the total minimum payment and you don't charge anything again at all, it's going to take eight years to pay off that debt. If you if you make just an additional $50 a month payment, it's going to take three years and you're going to save $500 on that particular debt. That's how you can just something simple like putting an extra $50 towards the credit card without using it anymore could get that debt paid off significantly sooner. And it's really kind of painless if you can find that $50. Now, where it gets problematic is if you've got 10 of those and you have to figure out what to do, that's when it gets a little more complicated. Just, and then, and then keep in mind, when you don't have a balance, you're not paying interest. So that's where that $530 savings comes in. So the next slide. The next thing you can do, if you can, is you can pay more in principal, um, especially even on like a car loan. So if you pay extra towards the principal on a car loan, um, you're going to have that loan for less time because you're going to pay that balance down and you're eventually going to pay less interest and you won't have it for as long. Um, you can, you know, increase the monthly payment beyond the minimum at any time. Most loans, you just want to make sure there's no prepayment penalty on it. Some mortgages, I mean, older mortgages, I should say, have prepayment penalties, but most loans don't anymore because that was considered somewhat predatory back in the day. When I was a loan originator, lots of loans had prepayment penalties for mortgages, but now they're pretty much, as long as you haven't done like a subprime type loan, you shouldn't have any problem uh, prepaying or making extra payments towards the loan itself. Um, if you have extra funds to do, anything that you can put towards principal will help pay that loan off sooner. Um, but then you have to figure out you know, what, what to pay first, which is something that we'll talk about next. And I think that we can talk about that in the next slide. 
So the debt snowball, you might have heard of this. There's articles about this online. And again, everything I'm telling you is not earth shattering or, or uh, you know, um, I haven't reinvented the wheel in telling you all this. There are articles that you can go in and read in, in detail that could come with calculators for this. But this is a great, great tool. Um, the debt snowball, rolling up debt. Um, you decide how much you have to spend on debt. Let's say you have, I don't know, three credit cards and your minimum payments for them are $100 each. So $300 a month, just the minimum payments. But let's say you say, okay, um, I'm going to spend $400 a month towards this. So you start paying off, you put that extra $100 towards card number one. And eventually card number one is going to get paid off. So you still have that $400, but now you only have to spread it over two cards. So card number two will get paid off sooner. And then at the end, you'll have $400 still for just one card left. Um, the amount doesn't change. Um, it's reallocated among the remaining debt. Um, there's calculators online where you can literally put in how much do I owe? I have card one, card two, card three. And then you can order it by the interest rate that you have. Um, you know, the higher interest rate ones are usually better to pay off. Um, and as you put more money, you know, your $400 a month, eventually you'll They'll pay it off because you're not saying, oh, well, I paid off card one, so I'm just going to take that $100 and go buy myself something with it. No, you diligently say $400. I have this for my debt. This is my debt payment per month. Whatever it's going to go to, it's going to pay off that debt. Um, and that's pretty much how the debt snowball works. Um, again, there are calculators online um, you can find. Most people call it the debt snowball, which is why I called it that. We can move on to the next. What I was talking about is paying off higher interest or lower balances first. So when you're doing the debt snowball, let's say your card has only got a $200 balance, but the minimum payment's $50. That $50 will, will go away pretty quickly and you can apply it to something else much sooner. And the higher interest stuff, um, you know, again, you're paying more interest on it. So the sooner you can get that paid off, the less interest you're going to have to pay. Um, you know, interest accrues every month. So every month you don't have that card is interest you're not paying on that card. Um, and as we said, once it's paid off, don't spend the extra, keep it towards the debt. And that's when you'll see the benefits um, to, you know, the debt snowball is when, you know, you pay one thing off and you say, oh, wow, now I have that $50 I can put on the next card. And then that one goes down faster. And then you've got more money and that one goes down faster. And, and that's actually the tool that I used to get rid of the debt that I uh, acquired when I was helping with my family. Um, and it, it was very satisfying when I could pay something off and say, oh, wow, I paid it off. And now I can move forward and get rid of the, the next debt. And it kind of gets addicting in a little way because you're like, oh, look what I can do. Um, now, one thing, and this is the next slide, um, one thing that you want to talk about, let's say you were lucky and you got a low rate or an introductory rate. You may want to focus on paying that off first because you get the benefit of an introductory rate. So I mean, we, this doesn't happen as much anymore because rates are higher, but you know those letters you get in the mail, oh, you know, open this card and you transfer your balance for 0%. What they're hoping you do is that you don't pay off the balance during that introductory period, and then you have to pay all the interest. And some of these will literally add on all of the interest for the entire period. So I don't remember who it was. I think it was Care Credit. Um, my my mom had to get some significant dental work, and we used a Care Credit card, and it was zero percent as long as you paid it off in X number of months. I can't remember how much it was, and if you didn't pay it off, every dollar of interest that should have been charged was going to be charged. So believe you me, that debt was paid off <laughs> before the end of that period. Um, but that some that's that may just be that particular uh, card that we had gotten. But just read the fine print when you have those those introductory rates and make sure. And if that's the case, especially make sure you focus on paying that off first because you're you're getting a, a interest free loan for however long they're giving it to you. Take advantage of it. Um, if you get lucky to have a zero percent, use it, pay it off borrow that money, but, but, and give yourself extra time to pay it off. And the rates will usually shoot up, you know, after that introductory period ends. So if you do keep the balance, it, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt you. Uh, next slide. 
So here's here's the the, the topic of of uh, it's a hot topic right now debt consolidation. Um, what is debt consolidation? Debt consolidation is when you take several loans or credit cards. It could be any kind of loan. Um, it could be a, a it could be a car loan, although I don't know if you'd want to do that. Credit cards, personal loans, you know, anything that you might have, and you can combine it into one payment. Um, usually you have to go to a lender to do that. Um, you know, we offer debt consolidation loans here. A lot of lenders do. You might get um, letters in the mail from companies like SoFi or Best Egg or whoever it might be. I don't, I'm not endorsing any of them. I'm just thinking of some names that you might see in your mail. Um, and you can take a balance of all of your debt or a portion of your debt, combine it into one loan, hopefully with a lower rate and hopefully with a lower monthly payment when you add it together. Um, um, it can be a personal loan. You can also consider doing a home equity line of credit or a home equity loan. Those are a little more complicated to get and they have different requirements. Um, and that would be secured by your house. So you're taking unsecured debt and then securing it by your house, which means that if you don't pay that debt payment, your house could be put into jeopardy. So there are some definite pros and cons. You might get a better rate. You might be able to pay it off over a longer period of time, but there are some pros and some cons. Um, you, know, you have to be able to qualify for it. Uh, you have to have good enough credit and it has to make sense. Um, if you're going to combine all your payments into one and you're paying more um, and it's not a really short term, it may not be may worth it. You may want to try the debt, the debt snowball instead. Um, it, it really depends on you have to look at what you have in front of you, your own personal finance, figure out what's available to you in terms of a debt consolidation loan and and you know decide what's best for you don't just run into it headlong and say i'm going to consolidate my debt and the biggest concern is to use caution when you're creating new debt after consolidation um, when you consolidate your debt your credit cards are paid off they have zero balances they're free to use again and if you do then what happens then that house of cards starts again and you've already gotten a debt consolidation loan. And I'm going to tell a story from my mortgage origination days. Um, I had somebody who consolidated their debt on a mortgage and it was about a hundred thousand dollars worth of credit card debt that they put onto their house. And they came back to me about two years later, looking to do the same thing with another hundred thousand dollars of credit card debt. And I couldn't help them. This is, and again, I wasn't a counselor at this time. I was literally in a mortgage a mortgage originator. So I was a loan officer. And I was like, I can't help with this. You now owe $100,000 more than you did before. And your home value certainly didn't increase. And with home values increasing how they are, you feel like your house is a, um, almost like an ATM. You can keep taking the equity out. But eventually, either the values will go down or you'll run out of road just like that credit card. And then that's your house that you're talking about. We're not talking about a credit card that is not secured by anything. This is where you live. So be very, very careful when you think about what to do after you consolidate that debt. Um, you know, if, if you end up running out of road, it can be disastrous. So just be very, very careful and diligent. And if you, although closing out a credit card when you consolidate it can hurt your credit a little bit, if you don't think that you can be disciplined enough to not use that credit card again, it, it may hurt your credit score in the short term by closing out an account, but it may help your life in the long term. So you have to make that decision am I diligent enough to not use that card after I pay it off? And some people are, and some people aren't. Try to know yourself and know what you will do. Um, you know, I, I, mean, I guess you could do the freezer method where you take your credit cards and freeze them in a block of water. And then it takes a while for them to <laughs> thaw. So you can give yourself a cooling off period before you use your card again. But again, with those cards being saved in Amazon or, you know, in your, in your Google um, wallet, it's very easy to, to, buck that um, freezer method um, 
so that's 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 consolidation in a nutshell. Um, again, it's a great great tool if you can find a program or a loan that will help you lower your monthly payments. You can still use the debt snowball with that. Listen, I was paying five hundred dollars a month on my, all my debt, but now I'm only paying three. But I'm going to still continue to pay five hundred on it, and I can get that paid off sooner. So you can combine these tools together as well based on what you have at your disposal. Um, so we can move on to the next slide. So common debt pitfalls, and I've touched on this before. Com people will commonly turn to their credit cards to pay for things when their cash flow is negative. Guilty, raise my hand, I did it. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have done it. Um, sometimes it's a necessary evil. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not a good idea. Sometimes you're gonna have to figure out elsewhere. If you can't manage that debt that you take on when you're short, it's just going to keep getting worse. Um, you know, it can be good for a short term thing. Let's say, for example, you know, your furnace goes and you have to spend a thousand dollars to repair and you don't have that money in your emergency savings. You need your furnace. You got to keep yourself warm. Sometimes using it for an emergency like that is fine, but you have to have a plan once you take that, that debt on. What am I going to do with it? Um, you can move to the next slide. And then the first thing, ignoring your debt. So just because you have all this debt, you can't put your head in the sand like that ostrich. You got to face it and say, okay, I've got this debt. Um, not communicating with lenders when you're having trouble. I'll go into that a little bit more later. But if you're having trouble, sometimes a simple phone call will help. Um, either say, I can make my payment this day, or do you have programs to help? facing it head on. I've had people both in my foreclosure counseling and in my loss mitigation role where people were like, I just so afraid to call. I thought you'd be mean to me. Why on earth would be me mean to you? <laughs> I am never mean to anybody. If someone's saying they're having a hard time, we're going to listen to what they have to say. And most lenders will do the same. I can't speak for lenders that aren't me, but it's in everyone's best interest for us to communicate. So Ignoring it is never going to fix it. The best thing to do is to face it head on, even though it's hard. Um, a second pitfall is opening credit cards for store guest discounts. I know, you know, you go to Kohl's and they're like, oh, you can save 30% if you open a credit card today. But the interest rate on that thing is like 30%. So you buy a shirt and you don't pay it off right away. And it's going to cost you a heck of a lot more than that, that discount you got. And then you've got a store card with a high, high rate. I'm not saying store cards aren't useful and helpful, but just be mindful when you open it and what you do with it. Don't run up a huge balance on the store cards because they're never going to get you anywhere. This is a big one, credit repair scams. Um, if you are solicited for something and it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, if someone solicits you and says, hey, we can repair your credit, we can consolidate your loans. We can do this. We can do that. They're trying to sell you something and they may or not, not be looking out for your best interest. That doesn't mean there aren't programs that can be helpful. It's definitely worth it for you to research anything that you might get, but be very, very careful because there are a lot of scammers out there and they will try and find a way to make money off you any way you possibly can. And usually things that you can do to fix your credit, things that you can do to fix your debt, you can do yourself for free. Um, you know, there's places say, oh, we'll write you letters to dispute your debt. If you have a dispute with your credit card, all you have to do is A, contact your lender or B, contact the credit bureaus. Um, you don't have to pay somebody to do anything. You can do it yourself. You don't need to hire an attorney. I mean, you can if you need to hire an attorney for some reason, but you don't have to pay some company to do it for you. Um, which moves us on to debt management programs. Things like, I'm I'm not endorsing anybody. I just, I just know the names, National Debt Relief, Freedom Debt Relief, things like that. Those are debt management programs. How a debt management program works is they will usually um, advise you to stop paying your debt. So let's say you've got a credit card and you've got a personal loan. You're going to stop paying that debt. And they're going to say, well, we're going to, we're going to have you pay us $200 a month and we're going to pay off that debt for you. Um, but they don't tell you necessarily 
clearly how they're going to do that. You're going to stop paying your debt and you're going to get collection calls and your collection calls and collection calls. And several months will go by, your account's very far past due, your credit's tanked. Um, and then at some point, the lender uh, will say, well, we're not going to continue collecting this anymore. We're going to charge this off. That doesn't mean you don't own the debt anymore. It means that they're, the, the lender or the bank has said, we're, this is a bad debt. We're likely never going to get paid this money. So we're going to take it off of our accounting as possible income and as a loss of money. We're not going to get paid this. But that doesn't mean they stop. you stop owing it. It just means that accounting-wise, the, the lender took it off. They then usually will send it to a collection agency or to an attorney. Um, and at that point, when that happens, that's when the debt management programs come in and say, hey, listen, can we settle for less? Now, your credit's ruined and you may get off with paying this, this loan for less because you've been paying them $200 per month that they've been holding on to. They haven't paid anything to your debt. They're waiting till that charge off. And then they're going to say, well, that $2,000 balance, can we settle it for 1000 and let's say you may have paid 2000 already, and then they're going to keep the difference for themselves. So again, I'm speaking in kind of general terms. I don't know how much profit they would make, but that's ultimately the goal. And some lenders don't work with those, those companies, so you may end up having to pull it out anyway and then deal with it separately. So they are an okay tool. I'm not going to say don't use them. Um, but you have to understand what the consequences are. If your choice is a debt management program or bankruptcy, look into the debt management program, ask the questions. How are you going to get my debt down? How is this money going to be used? What is the actual process? And if they can't explain it to you, then I probably wouldn't go for it. But if they can explain transparently how they're going to do it, by all means. Um, one of the resources that I'm going to refer you to is called Balance. And we'll go into that later, but they have a debt management program that they actually endorse. And it's one of the better ones. Um, I think it's called CCCS. So that is one that I would probably recommend, but again, it's not right for everybody. And again, be careful with debt consolidation in general. Um, it's a great tool, but if you don't use it properly, it can make a problem that was small, huge. So just be very, very careful when you're consolidating your debt. We can move to the next. Uh, Kim, we're just about at uh, 10.45. Good. I, I'll just have a little bit about um, what to do if you can't make payments, and I can go through that. I'll probably be done in a couple minutes, so it should be good. So what, can, what do you do if you can't make your payments? This is where my area of expertise is. Um, make sure you're paying your most important bills and reach out to your lenders. Most, most lenders have programs like what we have here. Um, they have hardship programs. Um, and at the very least, you can make a payment arrangement. Some lenders will offer deferment if your hardship is short term, or they may change your loan terms for a longer term hardship. They may modify your loan. And this goes for mortgages, personal loans, credit cards. Mortgages, there are a lot of laws that um, exist that will help you have better success, especially in the state of New York. There are very specific processes that we have to follow when you get behind on a mortgage. Um, there's actually settlement conferences that have to be had before a foreclosure is, is um, completed. So the, the courts in a foreclosure want you to be um, working with your lender. So, and the same could go for anything. You may not have success, but I recommend calling every single lender that you have and saying, listen, I'm having a hard time. What can you do? We can move to the next slide. Don't be afraid. Um, reaching out to lenders is the most difficult things to do because you're afraid or you're embarrassed. Um, but we work with people every day are facing financial hardships. That's what I do all day long when I'm not doing these webinars. And you won't get help if you don't ask for it. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. And that's, you know, the way I live my life. If I don't ask for something and I don't get it. It's my own fault. Um, they may still say no, but that doesn't mean that, that you didn't try. And you can go to the next slide. So what do you say? It's very simple. Just say, I'm having trouble making my payments and I'd like to talk to someone about what my options are so I don't fall behind or more behind. And just you know, keep notes, take information down, see what they tell you. Hopefully they'll have a program for you. Um, they may not, but if they do, you might be able to lower your interest rate, skip some payments. There's a lot of things that, that, that might be able to be done. 
And again, the, the resources that I have at the end will be able to help you with that as well. And then lastly, these are just my last slide, next. Uh, consequences of ignoring debt. Um, if you miss payments, your credit score can get reduced. Um, you can have late charges and they can add up very quickly. Um, and then we talked a little about charge offs and collection calls. When you don't make your payments, the, the bank's going to call you and they're going to say, hey, listen, when can you make a payment? And that can be very stressful. So that's why keeping in contact with the lender is important. And then if you don't pay the loan um, and it gets to that charge off status that I described, um, you know, interest and penalties can add up and it could go so far as to the attorney that I talked about going to court and getting a, a judgment against you for that debt that you didn't pay. Um, and they can do something called a wage garnishment where if, if they meet the requirements, they can garnish your wages right from your paycheck. Um, so we don't want it to get to that point, certainly. Um, starting at the beginning where you say, listen, I'm having some trouble and you reach out first, that'll help it from getting to that, that end, that end result that we don't want. Um, and then just to tie it all up on the next slide, here's the nutshell. If you take anything away, just take this slide away from you. Stop creating the new debt. Know what you owe. Determine what you can put towards the debt every month. Ask for help if you need it. And if it's important to you, make it a priority. Those are the things that you can take away from this that will say, well, you know, what am I doing with my debt? Remember this slide and remember what I said about them and hopefully it'll help you get through. Um, you can go to the next slide because we're going to go into some of the tools. So debt tracking tools, there's so many things available online. I couldn't even possibly give them all to you. There's a, there's debt tracking sheets that you can look for on the internet where you can keep track of everything. Our mobile app, we have different tools in our mobile app that you can use to look at your debts and your budgeting even. Um, next slide. And here is the one, the one resource that I think is really important. Remember this slide, um, balance. I'm a financial counselor, but I don't work as a financial counselor. Um, this company is full of financial counselors. They, you can do telephonic counseling with them where they can go over your budget, your debt, anything. And they have a ton, ton of resources on their website. Um, the balancepro.org, it's, I use this all the time. Whenever I'm looking for information, I always say, well, what does balance have about this issue or this topic? Anything, how to get a better vehicle loan, how to consolidate debt, tons of resources that you can use that are even better than me. So um, <laughs> it's a great, great place to start for information. And then on the next slide, I have some, some resources for housing issues. If you're facing difficulty with um, your mortgage, if you're facing difficulty paying your bills, if you're ha having housing insecurity, if you're having things that are, are quite serious, these two resources in this area, I, I think RDAC is in Orange County, but they're partnered with RUPCO. So if you're in Orange, you would still contact RUPCO and they would um, get you to RDAC. I think they've merged. It's been a while. I actually did my foreclosure counseling. I was at RUPCO um, way back in the day. So that's why I'm familiar with these resources. Um, they're extremely helpful. Um, they have a lot of knowledgeable people who work with them and they will be able to help you, um, you know, sort it all out if it's a housing related issue. Next slide. Just, this is just the next steps. Um, we have some resources here that are listed. Um, stop creating the new debt, evaluate your financial picture, talk to your creditors. And then we have some resources on our own website that you can refer to. Um, we have some really good content as well, just for more information, but that should help you, you know, have some more in-depth questions. Um, I even had, there's an article that I wrote with um, uh, somebody here about different types of hardship um, uh, resources like deferments and things like that. I can't remember the name of the, the title of it, but it is on that website and it's, it's helpful as well. So that does it. I'm sorry, I'm four minutes over, <laughs> but uh, any questions, we hopefully I can help you with as well. And not to worry, Kim, we uh, forgive you for being four minutes over because that really was a heck of a presentation with a lot of fabulous information. And uh, I think many of us uh, can relate to some of the situations that you described. Um, I also personally made a decision when I got my mortgage to just pay $50 extra per month for the principal. And it saved me a couple of years um, on the mortgage. They said, well, you 
your mortgage is your mortgage is almost finished paying. I said, what are you talking about? It's a 30 year mortgage. I said, well, no, you, you paid uh, down the principal. So um, that is really helpful um, in, in those terms. And your advice is, is just wonderful. Um, so we do have a couple of questions in the chat. One is, is there a budget template or app that you could recommend using for setting up a budget? I personally don't have a specific one. I think your best resource to locate a template would be at Balance. So balancepro.net, they have a ton of templates that you can use. So I would say go, go to the Balance website and look for budget templates and you should be able to have multiple ones to choose from. And that and those I, I think would be the best because I, I trust what comes from that website. Okay, great. And the second one is, does Mid-Hudson Valley Credit Union accept DACA recipients? And if so, are there any restrictions? I'm not familiar with DACA. So is that? Um, is not, the person who asked that, would they like would they to? they chat a little more? Because I'm not sure what DACA is. I can Google it, but it's not. So, I, someone from Open Arms Ministry asked that question. I believe it's the program for children who are, um, you know, um, who are, are born um, from immigrants who don't have citizenship status yet. It's a program oh. for them. Okay, that's, that is um, more of a, a branch level question. I don't know if Melissa knows the answer to that, um, that we may have to get back to that person. I'm not sure. Personally, myself, that's not a question that I would be qualified to answer. Yes, we can definitely, I can get back to you um, regarding that question. I know that, um, no, actually, yeah, I, I'll look it up and I'll get back to you with that. Um, I have to contact one of the branches, yes, because I'm okay. not, not familiar. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Um. The only other question in the chat is, will we receive this recording? Uh, you won't receive it individually, but within a, about a week or so, it will be up on the um, United Way website um, on, in our uh, financial seminar series page. Um, I will quick put that in the chat. I'll just like uh, just take me a minute or two to look that up um, and put it in the chat for you. Um, does anyone have any questions? Anyone else? Any questions on your mind? This is the time to ask. We have an expert here, so don't be embarrassed if anything is on your mind. <clears throat> While people are thinking about questions, I just wanted to thank you, Kim. That was a terrific presentation. Um, so much valuable information, and I just want to thank you for presenting to us today. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Sorry, Deidre, you're on mute. We can't hear you. So sorry. Um, I will send out the uh, the web the uh, link to get onto our financial seminar uh, section of our website, so that in about a week you can review um, the presentation. So I will send that out because it's going to take. I'm I'm not a friend of the internet, so it'll take me too long to to find it and put it <laughs> in the chat. Um, so uh, I would also like to uh, echo Jeannie's thanks uh, to both Kim and Melissa. Kim, it was fabulous. And as Jeannie says, she always learns something. I learned something new as well. Um, so we really appreciate your time and your expertise. So thank you very much. So I'll just pass over to Rebecca. It was wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Melissa and Kim. Very informative. Thank you. Deidre. All righty. So that concludes uh, our financial seminar for this morning. Be on the lookout for our next one, which will probably be in September. We don't know the topic yet, um, but uh, we send uh, the promotion out uh, to the same places that we sent this one out. So you will likely uh, get uh, to know about that. And it's all, it'll also be on our website. So thank you so much, all of you for attending. We really appreciate your attention and your participation and do have a good day. Keep cool and 
Have a good one. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye -bye. everyone.